All right, well, welcome back. Episode two of the Rex Chapman Show with my guy, Josh Hopkins. Can you believe they let us do another show, Josh? Actually, no, I can't, Rex. <laughs> you owe me 10 bucks. <laughs> I'm happy um, to do that. How about today's guest, by the way? How excited are you? My Janie Lynch, our Jane Lynch. Now she's our Janie Lynch. She's our Jane Lynch. I'm fired up, man. She's a, such a sweetheart. I can't. Such a sweetheart. Wait. Such a superstar. A humble superstar. A hilariously humble superstar. Yeah. Right? I, I, yeah. I mean, she's been in so much stuff that I love, that my kids love. Uh, I'm, I'm full blown excited. Me too. We should mention too that uh, the Rex Chapman podcast with Josh Hopkins. Yeah. That's how we should say it, by the way. Well, you know what? We need a jingle. We do need a jingle, a little jingle. You know, because those are so effective. You know, yeah. like, liberty, liberty, live. I mean, I can't get them out of my head. Even old ones. Like, do you remember, like, by Menon? By Menon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, uh, also basketballnews.com powered by Be Sure. If you're listening to this, thank you for uh, watching, but it'd be great if you subscribed and then gave us the big five-star review. And if you don't think it's a five-star, you can rate it a five-star anyway. <laughs> thank you. Subscribe, rate, review, I think. That's what they say, right? Subscribe, right. rate, review. Thanks. For the... Rex Chapman and Josh Hopkins show podcast. That's hey, buddy, I got I saw a picture today uh, of your Instagram that had I almost cried on it. Uh, it was your father, Larry, who's been on, in lockdown isolation for about a year with his great grandson that yes. he just held for the first time ever. Yes. Oh my yes. God! What it was so beautiful. Did you see the his smile? Genuine, full, genuine, ear to ear. It was. It it really. It was. Without getting, I don't want to cry on this. No, you can't. Cut. You can't do it when you want because you're a terrible actor. So you're just take that. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, Dad has been. He broke his leg very early in COVID and had to go get surgery at the hospital and no one could go. And we were all scared he was going to get COVID. And then he's been in this rehab place and no one's been able to visit him just except to the window. And they finally opened up and um, my niece, his granddaughter and husband got to, uh, got to go and bring Roman, his great grandson in. And it was a great moment for, Oh. Our entire family, so many of us, no you clue. know, have had that cross to bear during this. It's been so tough. So uh, I know that's happening or about to happen or hopefully will happen for a lot of people. And I know a lot of people, you know, tragically missed out yeah. on that chance. So I uh, feel really lucky yeah, that we too. got to have it. So anyway, really grateful. A, thankful for that. It's an up or downer. You yeah. Know? Yeah, absolutely. So you've been gone all week. You've been gone in Atlanta covering yeah. the tournament. Yeah, man. I was down there doing uh, NCAA tourney studio stuff. Um, well, it was so good to be back. You just watching basketball. Um, some kind of little bit of normalcy. It's the first time I'd been on a plane in a year. Um, but, man, it was great. Such good games. Uh, what a crazy year. It was hard to kind of – you know, we saw a lot of upsets, especially that first day, four overtime yeah. games. Um, we got some good underdogs coming up. I, I got a question for you. You watched, right? You saw Luca. Oh, yes, you saw Luca Garza play for yes. Iowa. Okay. Yeah, Did you yeah. see Cameron Crutwig, Crutwig play for Loyola? Yes. All right. If you've got the twenty seventh pick in the draft, who do you take, Garza or Crutwig? I tell you what I do is I call you and I ask, <laughs> who should I take here at 27? Man, because I love that kid, Cameron Crutwig from Loyola. He's got good feet. He, he doesn't look like a player. He, he's a great teammate, can score, can really pass. I mean, Josh, he whipped our ass two years ago when he was at Loyola, and he beat Kentucky. 
He's yeah. a senior now. I, I love that kid. But, um, yeah, good games yesterday. The SEC has a fair – Garza. Fair. How about Garza? I love that, though, when, when he cried. Oh, yeah, I mean, that, that's hard. You, you, you know, that kind of – if you know you got that kind of heart and that yeah. kind of uh, great locker room guy coming in, that's got to bounce him up a little bit because he – man, what a – he I mean, seemed like a great kid. No question. And, you know, he came into school. He was heavy, you know, as a freshman. He's four years later is the all time leading scorer there. Just kept getting better and better and better yeah. every year. And now player of the year got his Jersey in the rafters before he's even played his last game. Uh, yeah. What a, Fantastic. What, I mean, the epitome of what college basketball is supposed to be all about, I think. Um, but it, yeah, what a great tournament so far. SEC hasn't fa- fared super well. We do have Alabama still yeah, they're great last night. They man. sure did. They sure did. Um, but I, I still, it's going to come down to Gonzaga, Baylor, Alabama, or Florida State, in my opinion. It's funny that Alabama, Florida State looks really athletic. They are. They always do yeah. somehow. Some of those programs are just like, they're athletic. Yeah. You know, Leonard they're Hamilton. always athletic. Yeah. Leonard yeah. Hamilton. And yeah. they always have big bigs. Oh, yeah. He Giant says big. like three – People, you're like, who, who, yeah, who where? is that? Yeah. yeah. His center, he's got one center from Senegal, I think, and another center from uh, Russia. Um, he Leonard knows how to find guys, man. He's been doing it since hell. He recruited me to Kentucky. He recruited Sam Bowie. He re- recruited right. Dirk yeah. Minifield, Derek That's Moore, right. uh, on and on. Mel Turpin. He Leonard knows talent. <laughs> yeah, he does. That's yeah. for sure. And he's been at it. He's been forever. at it forever. Forever. Um, oh, yeah. Here's an interesting fact about the tournament. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, my bracket is perfect. Is it? Yeah. One of uh, probably two out of a billion. Wow. Yeah. No and, one? and I think, uh, I mean, I've got, I've got Kentucky winning it. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> things look, look good. But we're talking about the, the women's tournament. Because Kentucky, our Lady Cats are still rolling, baby. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That no, Lady Cats, that's Lady old school Cat. too. I don't even yeah, think they call I will, Lady I will, Cats. I'll tell you this: I, Kentucky I had <laughs> Kentucky Lady Cats. Kentucky. Oops. I don't know what it's called. Um, yeah, I uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Where where where? where, where well, were we that's not. About? That's not. Uh, that's not the best. That's not do. not normal. Oh, though. I know what. I, yeah, I know what I was going to tell you is that uh, I do. I've got. Uh, I've got my bracket is not that bad. I've really? still got six, seven of the eight, my eight elite eight teams in, and you know who really screwed me, Rutgers. I had Rutgers winning the last game and another game to get to the elite eight, and they were up ten with like mm-hmm. two minutes to go and wow. just shit the bed. You would have won every bracket you were in oh. at that point. Oh. I had LSU, LSU beating Michigan, and they they hung tight. I was them. disappointed in LSU last night, and here's why. Uh, Michigan, my rookie, my little rookie, Juwan Howard, uh, is the <laughs> coach of Michigan. We were teammates for two years in uh, Washington, the, one of the best guys ever ever uh don't let the smooth taste fool you though he's still from the south side south side of chicago and uh most professional guy you know but step in between those lines and it's go time um i Juwan has a system he's been down in miami uh with the heat for the last you know half decade learning their system and he knows how to teach he knows how to coach they're they're not going to beat themselves they're going to be disciplined they're not going to take make shortcuts. LSU, on the other hand, wildly athletic. And as that game wore on, they became more and more and more undisciplined. They get they just give away a layup here or there, take possessions off. Um, I was really disappointed with them late in the game, and you know they ended up losing it. But uh, yeah, they, had, yeah, they had more part talent. Of that, part of that, I think, you know, they they uh, I think they're bench was outscored like yeah. 22 to four it's like i think they got tired you know like if you're not getting a lot off the bench yeah you know. michigan's gonna be good and let's not forget they're without their best player he, he's out 
Isaiah Livers, I mean, the big kid inside is maybe their best player, but their most veteran player, he's a freshman, most veteran player is Livers, and he's out with a stress fracture. Um, they're still really dangerous. I, I'm hoping we do get to see Gonzaga and Baylor in the finals. Yeah, that'll be a, that'll be a two, nice two run. Titans and both teams full of grown men. Absolutely, and then grown before men. they even get there, Gonzaga is going to have to play probably either Alabama or Florida State, and that that'll be a good game. Gonzaga is uh, really good. Those three Alabama's guys. Alabama's got to scare everybody because if they're if they're on, there's it's nothing you can do. They yeah. play the. There's a lot of fun to watch. They're long and athletic. They? Yeah, rangy. Um, Break you down. They pass yeah. it. Just zip, zip, zip. Whoop. Yep. Yep. Really SEC. fun. What about the uh, what about the NBA? Real quickly, some 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 stuff of yeah. bad news. Yeah, Lamelo. Lamelo no. out the rest of the season. All right, let me ask you, what what does that do to his rookie of the year campaign? I don't know. Traditionally, he would be done. I know. You but know, Zion was season. done. Yeah, shortened season. Uh, he was head and shoulders. Yeah, who's the next so, guy though? Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards on a uh, terrible Minnesota team. But he has been coming on strong. He has. He has. You know, and he's had the dunk of the decade. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's got to count for something. Yeah. Uh, and then we got LeBron. Course, LeBron's but, yeah, out. But a dark horse for rookie of the year and really dark. And he was playing well. And uh, um, it would be fun if he <laughs> picked it up. But was yeah. our Isaiah quickly? Uh, no, Emmanuel quickly. Emmanuel. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Very Emmanuel close. Very close. Yeah. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Yeah, no, yeah, right? He's playing Mando so great. playing great. You know what really gets me thinking about this tournament to backtrack for just a second? If we go back a year ago, the Kentucky Wildcats with Nick Richards, Emmanuel Quickly, and Tyrese Maxey were about to go on a run. We we were playing our best basketball. We could have mm. won that thing last year. Oh, oh, I'm going to be sick. Why, <laughs> why? That's one interesting thing I've noticed about this year because it's our second year – not being in the tournament the first year, last year being no one was in the tournament. But that's just, you know, this is my favorite time of the year. Same. Selection Sunday. And then uh, it's also the day we spring ahead so the days start getting longer. That's like yep. my favorite day Same. of the year. I'm Same always year. so excited to go go watch the, uh, watch the selection show Sunday is my favorite thing. And so I was just in terrible mood. But I do remember – when Kentucky's not in the tournament, I actually, once I'm over the heartbreak, yeah. actually enjoy the tournament. Enjoy it more. Yeah. Yeah. So I never enjoy the, the tournament. The only time I ever enjoy the tournament is if after right after we, we win. win the yeah. whole thing. Because the whole as thing. soon as we win, I'm not happy. No, I'm just relieved. Next, yeah, I'm relieved ready to the next over. guy, next team. Yeah. And to stress out about who we play next. I'm right. just getting stressed right now. Yeah, okay? and, it, we're, and we're out. We well, our lady cats are in. That's right. Uh, yeah. We're Hoops. getting about that, right? Yes, we do. But back to the NBA. Anything else you've, you've noticed? LeBron out. I, Kept his know, streak alive of three of of double digits. I know. You know what? You know what's weird about that? Tony Delk and I. Tony and I did the NCAA studio stuff together this last week. So I was with Tony, and the night before LeBron got hurt. Tony said, do you know how he's had, he's got this streak of consecutive games, of double of figures and said, I mean, think about how hard that is. He said, I mean, if you go out in the first six minutes, you know, you get a knee to the, uh, to the thigh and you got six points that streaks over and it happened almost happened the next night. Yeah. That that's, that's that old fault. kismet. That's Tony so, Delk's fault. Mm -hmm, it is. <laughs> it is, but I'll never fault him because he's one of my favorite all-time cats. It, it was so Double good. Zero. It was so good sitting and talking to Tony uh, for the last four days. So good. Just to be around people, <laughs> you yeah. know, social <laughs> yeah. distance. But, uh, yeah, it was it was good. Just got to kind of get a little bit of normalcy back. You know, right. we've been we've just been out of pocket for a year. Been yeah, great. congratulations to everyone. We're everyone. starting. I want to get, a you know, the carriage before the horse. But things are starting to open up. It's starting to feel more normal. And that feels good for everyone. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, so you want to uh, 
talk about Jane Lynch? I do. Or why don't you talk about her for a second? Uh, well, not a lot of people know this, but she's my best friend. No, uh, <laughs> it was good to get to, to see her. She's such a comedy genius, and 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 to see how that mind works, you know. And to, she's just such a wonderful human. Yeah. As you speak to her, you realize just unbelievable, you unbelievable. know, just a, a a sweet sweet soul and hilarious. Yeah. I remember the first times I really remember the Christopher Guest movies. And then she's gone on now. She does it. She hosts game shows, game shows, she shows the movies, Emmys, I believe, or yes. she, she's unbelievable. Um, <clears throat> so I was really, really excited. What, what, what about you? And you're uh, Janie, as you call her. She's our Janie. And now she is. She's one of our besties. And I want to tell you this, you know, our Tatum, my daughter Tatum, uh, Tatum. your Tatum, who's 22. I asked Tatum if she wanted to ask Jane a uh, question and Tatum didn't get back to me in time. So she okay. said after we'd already talked to Jane. And um, so I just texted Jane Tatum's question. And I said, my daughter Tatum wanted to know if you still knew that song from whatever movie it was that Tatum was asking about. I think it was, um, oh, I can't remember. Anyway, so I sent the note to Tatum or to, to Jane and I forgot about it. A day later, I opened my phone, had a text from Jane and it said for Tatum. And it was a voice note of her singing the song and I sent it to Tatum and Tatum flipped out as you can imagine she would. Now you tell me that, that is a star. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, yeah. Tatum too, made Tatum's life. Tatum uh, loves movies and television. Lo like that's her yeah. thing. Yeah. I mean, J Jane Lynch just took time out. She could have said, oh yeah, I still know it or whatever. And she sang the song for Tatum and sent a message. I mean, that's the sweetest thing ever. Just made my whole life. I, I want to cry thinking about it. <laughs> That's the best intro we could possibly have. Yes. So why don't we get to this interview? I can't wait. The Let's get to Janie. Rex Let's talk to Chapman Janie. show with Josh Hopkins. No? But yep, it I is like it. A, a, powered by basketballnews.com, where you can, uh, when you watch this, you can watch, obviously, Mm -hmm. and rate. subscribe subscribe and rate that is Five always stars. really helpful Five to stars. basketballnews.com uh -huh. yeah no no that's not a yeah. jingle i like it we'll we'll All work right. on it we'll work on it hey let's get to jane lynch deal Janie Marie Lynch, thank you, thank you, thank you for coming here. I'm so excited to see you. And I know you and Josh know each other a little bit. Uh, I want to get into more of that. But man, I'm such a huge, 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 humongous fan. And oh. I, you're in New York right now, right? I am, yes. I'm in a hotel room. I'm doing The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I'm traveling for the first time since the, uh, the pandemic started. And uh, I'm not vaccinated yet, but as soon as I can get vaccinated, I will amazing that you can't get vaccinated I, I i have i'm in kentucky yeah. rural kentucky and uh you know i wanted my folks to get vaccinated they're in their 70s yeah. i waited for them to get vaccinated and then there's so much vaccine here and people aren't using it and yeah. so i Absolutely. ended up get qualifying it. i got it i got my first dose I, josh you've got your first dose right i got my second one Oh, oh good. yeah, fully I did the same thing. Fully vaccinated. They, uh, had some extra here and I got on the website right when they said to do it. So I'm all, I feel really, feels good. I'm bulletproof. Well, we're in, um, I'm, <laughs> in, I'm in uh, LA and California is not doing a very good job. Um, so I'm, it's still not, uh, I'm 60. So I'll be able to, I'm, I'm probably in the You're next not. year. I am. You... I know. I've got great lighting. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I, I, so I'm, I, so, I'm waiting so, on that. What's it like to be back at work right now? Is it weird to be? Uh, I mean, I've gone out a few yeah. times where I haven't, you know, really been doing that as much. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of weird socializing again. Um, is, have you found is. that? 
Well, you know, it's funny. We're so adaptable as humans. At least I, I at least I am. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of didn't bother, the pandemic didn't bother me socially because I'm, I'm kind of a homebody anyway, but um, it feels great to get back to work. And we have all this protocol, this COVID protocol. They hire professionals to make sure we all stay safe. And there are only certain places you could walk. You don't even pass anybody in the hall. And um, we're all tested every day. But, you know, it's it's just what you got to do. And the great thing is that, you know, oh, we're back to work and we're, you know, we're hanging out again. And it, oh, it's just I love it. I had my first day yesterday and I'm still flying high. Well, of course, you're back to work because I've never seen anyone work as much as you. Your IMDb is like war and peace. Scrolling, my finger got tired. It's like it's like when they tell me to put in my birth date and I got to go to 1970. And it just right, keeps me too. I have to go 10 more to 60. <laughs> yeah, um, it takes forever. Yeah. Well, I love to work. I love I've, I've been doing this a long time and I rarely say no. I never say no. I, I, I say no now every once in a while. But um, I really love to do it. You know, it's one of those things that it, it's, a, it's a great gift to know exactly what you want to do. And um, I don't know if you guys have that. Rex, did you always want to be a want to be a basketball player? Um, I did. I, I really did. And yeah. and it, my dad was a basketball player and then a coach. And so it's really all I, I knew, all I cared about. But I, I was reading something on you the other day and it, it started. Uh, it, it made me think about something that happened high school, 16, 17. I read that you, you, you quit drama yeah. and then you felt really bad about it. And you felt like you kind of got, you know, banished from the drama yeah, people. I was banished. Yes. <laughs> I, I lived in, we lived in Kentucky, born yeah. and raised. And, um, you know, being a member of the drama club, at, at least in public school, Josh went to private school, uh, was not, it was, it was, it was kind of Pretty frowned cool. upon. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't cool. And especially like if you played sports, I always secretly, I wanted to be, I couldn't sing, but I wanted to be, you know, I wanted to be yeah. in the choir and do that stuff. And I wanted, but my mom always wanted me to play the piano. I wouldn't play because my dad maybe thought it wasn't, you know, masculine Your mom's enough. a great pianist. Yeah, she's <laughs> yeah. okay. But my best friend and I, Greg Bond, we're, we were the best buddies in high school. We played basketball together. He played basketball for my father afterward. We grew up together. We didn't drink and smoke and hang out and everything, but, and people, because we were together so much people, there was a rumor that he and I were gay. Mm -hmm. And so one year for the talent show, we decided that it was like our junior year, we were going to sing endless love to one another. Um, I love it. And, and we, we practiced, it was, probably the worst thing ever, but nobody knew that's what we were going to do, but that's what we were going to do. And we chickened out, right. I mean, five minutes before. Oh yeah. And, and, and I've always <laughs> regretted it. I was like, God, it would have been so, but I chickened out and I oh, couldn't commit. So well, that I would, just would have been a horribly brave thing to do. And I, I don't blame yeah. you. You know, obviously I, I chickened out before too. And you learn from those things, don't you? I, I was in a play, I was cast in a play and all of a sudden, I just got um, scared. You know, I wanted it so badly. I wanted to be in a play so badly. And I lost confidence. I was 14. I was a, a freshman. And um, I quit. And I joined the tennis team, which I love. I played sports, too. So I, I loved playing sports, but not it didn't have the, you know, the juice for me that being in a play has. And, uh, oh, I regretted that. I dreamt about it, horrible nightmares that I was not allowed in any plays for the rest of my life. And I, I did. I got banished by the theater people. That's, you know, a terrible fate to be banished by the theater people. And I, I finally got back um, and I vowed, you know, this is what I want to do. I, I can't I can't, I can't chicken out like that anymore. And so you wanted to, per, you knew you wanted to perform from a young age. Oh yes. Yeah. At, at what gate in front of your siblings and family and stuff did that? Yeah. 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 You know, I think you're kind of born with there's, there's nurture and there's nature. And I think that I was born with um, the desire to do this, to perform, to, to act, to play act. I love playing house and I loved having an audience. Um, and then uh, my parents, uh, uh, though they weren't in the, the business, they were um, they loved to sing and they harmonized with each other. And there was always music in the house. And I'm not necessarily a great singer, but I'm a lover of music. 
And, um, you know, I think I got it from them, or at least the permission to uh, engage in this. And it was my, my favorite moments with my parents. We're sitting around the kitchen table, having a drink. I'm drinking with them. I'm in high school drinking with them and singing <laughs> uh, three-part harmony. Sounds that fabulous. And you can play guitar, though, too. Where, how did well, you learn to do that? Well, I took guitar lessons. I'm, I'm not very good. I played in a mighty wind, and a lot of it was. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Josh plays too. I know. Well, I know. Th- what do they well. say? Uh, uh, Bob Dylan says, "All you need is three chords and the truth," and I've got that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You know, Rex, it's not too late for you to. You could vanish all that now and sing. You've got a beautiful voice. Why don't you I sing? Do. Yeah. My love, there's only my you. My love, life. there's only you. <laughs> in my life <laughs> I, I'm much like uh, the, you thank great. you uh, my <laughs> uncle who was played in a band forever he said you sing all the time on the radio I would do you know because yeah. I bust because I love music and yeah. uh, uh, he said but dude you just sing in the same key all the time I was like oh, I know I, I, in that key I, it sounds not. different in my head but yeah, I know right. it's coming out like shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, robots sound good oh. singing. <laughs> no, uh, Jane, it's interesting what you just said because you said you, you know, talking about chickening out and doing yeah. stuff. And I, I, uh, I heard where you said that one of your biggest regrets, or if you could go back to talk to your early self, would be like to, to stop the self doubt, doubt yeah. to go with the confidence. And how did you get to that point? I'm 50 and I still feel like I waver in and out of it. It's like, I'm deserving, I'm, the, I'm gonna get this. And sometimes I'm like, I'm a big fake and everyone yeah. knows. Yeah, how did no, you get past? I, I know. That is the human dilemma. And I think the thing is, is it can be cultivated. Um, biz, uh, confidence breeds confidence. And you do have to fake it till you make it. But one of the things I noticed, because I I was very insecure too, if you have a success, quote unquote success, where you feel like you brought the best of yourself to something, you can build on that. That stuff grows. And if you focus on, I didn't bring the best of me in this, that grows. So that's why people who are successful get more and more successful and, and more and more confident. And people who feel like they're failures will get more and more failure. And in, it, it's, a, it's a tough thing because it seems to be a law of, of human nature that success breeds success and failure breeds failure. So you kind of have to get to a point where you have to fake it. If you, you know, there are people who have that kind of confidence. They're born with it. And they just, it's, it's unquestioning. They don't have to do any inner work for it. But then there's those of us who are the tender souls who have to, you know, kind of, banish those horrible thoughts like i said fake it because they're going to keep coming just fake it pretend they're not there and replace them as much as you can with the positive stuff because positive breeds positive for sure it's so it's so relatable and even to sports and basketball right i I, from the time i was young i remember you know you'd, you'd have an opportunity to take the last shot or make the last shot and I remember getting upset one, probably first or second grade. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I came home, I'd missed the last shot. And my dad was like, that's okay. Nobody else wanted to take the last shot. And I thought about it. I was like, well, all right. They did throw it to me and where everyone was saying, shoot. So, and then, you know, I did it again and I made one, you know, uh-huh. right at the end. And that, that just paves the way for you to take every one of them for the rest of your life. Cause you did it, you've done it before. And it does right. that confidence. It breeds more confidence. Um, I, I struggle in that really the only confidence I have is basketball. And yeah. still I, Josh and I were, we're uh, recording a, an ad for this, for this pod yesterday and yeah. we're going back and forth and he, we're going line at line for line. And I've read lines with him before. Not well, just, you know, as <laughs> friends. And, um, but when I'm on, I can't, I, it's like, I know you guys have studied it and studied acting. And from, you know, he can just wipe his brain and then get right into the next, you know, after a mess up and mm-hmm. right back into this. And I lose confidence if I read it wrong or if I say it wrong, I lose confidence immediately. And I don't know how to get past that. Yeah. You just, it's like, it's, it's like your, your dad said, you take the shot, just keep taking it, just keep taking it. You know, and then after a while, it, it just gets easy. 
It yeah. just gets easy. And, you know, you can teach an old dog new tricks. You know, you don't have to, um, you don't, you don't have to give up and go, well, you know, I'm too old for this. Um, no, you just, yeah. you know, just uh, so much about life is faking it. And that's what acting is. It's faking it. We're, we're faking that we're, we're pretending to be people, different people in a circumstance. And we're, you know, indulging ourselves in the, um, the given circumstances of that situation. And, you know, it's, it's not real, but we're pretending it's real. So we're kind of used to faking and, um, uh, you know, faking does work, you know, <laughs> it, it does. does it does. Mm -hmm. Can I, with, um, all, with all the work that you've done, because you've, like I've said with your IMDB and you did, you did commercials, you've, you've directed commercial, you've done so much, but w when you were, you've always worked, when was it? Because there's, I know it's little stepping points of fame and, and notoriety, but when was it when people stopped going, Hey, on the street, like you're that lady. And when they started going, Jane Lynch, was there a part that happened where it, it just expanded or was that a slow thing? No, it actually did. There were actual moments, um, you know, general time frames where stuff happened because usually people will say, no, I can't think of the moment that happened, but I can. And it was Glee. When I started doing Glee, people knew my name. When I when I did Best in Show um, uh, back in 2000 with Christopher Guest, that's when people started to do, hey, you're that lady. But, but the, the association with my name came uh, around Glee, you know, because, you know, te television is so powerful being in your, your living room. Um, it feels very intimate. And so people get to know your name. Yeah, I'm sure you got that on Cougar Town, too. I'm sure people started started at least saying, who's that guy? Oh, sure. But, you know, before that, it was always like, do you go to my gym? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, hmm. But uh did then it turned into who's that guy. Kids? And now if people come up to me and they're like, are you Josh Hopkins? I'm like, you just looked that up on your phone because there's <laughs> no way you know my name. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't quite hit the, oh, that's Josh Hopkins. I'm, you're that thing from that guy. Yeah, yeah. you're that guy in that thing with that girl who was on that thing. Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite things in the world is to be stopped on the street with, who are you? Yeah. Tell me who you uh -huh. are. Yeah, what have you been in? Yeah, what have you uh, been in? And then you like list something and go, oh, no, I didn't see, I don't watch television. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't but watch I did love episode 24 and season three of Glee right. when you were in the tracks of your dead thing, but I don't watch TV. I don't even I don't have watch a TV. TV. I'm too cool for that. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm unplugged, man. I'm off the grid. Mm -hmm. The great show that I've seen every episode. All day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. Jane, I, I, um, I'm from Owensboro, Kentucky, which is a big town in Kentucky, but a small town of about 50,000 people. And grow, uh, the family who grew up right across the street from me, uh, Florence Henderson's family. <laughs> She's from Owensboro, Carol Brady. She grew up dirt poor, didn't she? Yeah, 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 she did. She actually went between Henderson and Rockport, or I'm sorry, Owensboro and Rockport, Indiana, which is right yeah. across the river. But yeah, so, uh, and I know you played yeah, Carol played in, in a play with Andy Richter, who exactly. we're going to have on. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, Andy's the best. We're, we've been friends now for like 30 years. I think it's crazy. But uh, Florence Henderson, I got to meet her. She, really? uh, we, we did the real life Brady bunch where Andy played Mike Brady and I played Carol Brady. And it was a ridiculous drunken, crazy festival of theater that we, uh, we did, uh, in like 1990. And, uh, Florence it's legendary, Henderson, by the way, it oh, is legendary. Good. I mean, I'm this was, they, forgot. they performed, it was the actual words to episodes. You just yeah, did we that. Did the, we were grown ass adults doing actual episodes of the Brady bunch. And Florence Henderson and a couple of the kids who were at that point adults uh, came to see us and um, they were <laughs> backstage great. and they were taking pictures of us with them. And I was with her and she turned to me with to the most gorgeous vulnerability and said, you're not making fun of us, are you? And I said, no, 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 no. And we were somewhat, but it was with reverence. We, oh. we grew up loving the show and yeah, we were kind of um, uh, uh, taking the stuffing out of it. It was kind of pretentious and it was overly good and moralizing, but um, we, the dirty secret for all of us and the reason all of us got together, Andy and Jill Soloway and Faith Soloway and a bunch of other people that you'd probably recognize was our love for the show and how we wish that our childhood 
was like that. We wish when we threw a temper tantrum that someone would knock on our door and say, hey, you want to talk? Yeah, we all yeah. kind of wanted that. So anyway, I got to know her. And when I, I uh, was uh, promoting Glee, she had just written a book and um, we were on kind of the morning talk show circuit together and I got to know her a little better. And, uh, you know, she passed away uh, probably four or five years ago mm -hmm. and she was such an elegant, wonderful lady. So thank you for bringing up Florence. Oh, it was so it was such a, a idyllic show for many of us. I moved out to L.A. and lived at Josh's place for a couple of years, actually. But oh, yeah. when I was doing that, I, I drove out at the time with my 16 year old daughter, Tatum. And um, we we're driving through the desert, you know, and we work our way into uh, into the valley. And we just decided to stop and go to the Brady Bunch house. Aww. The actual Brady Bunch house. That's the first thing I did That's in great. L.A. Isn't that <laughs> great? About yeah. a week later, I drove down the coast uh, to go to uh, where they uh, Jim Rockford's mobile home. Oh, really? Oh, the <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, no, I did. Did I ever tell you that? No. I yeah. love James Garner. I, Me I, too. He was such a he was such a kind of like Cary Grant that, you know, handsome and masculine, but kind of wacky. Yeah, you know, yeah. Self-deprecating, and yeah, I loved, I loved the Rockford Files. I want to. have I a couple ask. questions for you, Go ahead. real quick. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, both of the, I'll put them both out there. One is, uh, you are, uh, you're so funny, and it, it's you're the Jedi of deadpan comedy of just. And are you like that with your friends? Do you do? Do you take the piss out of them with with just a look or just deadpan or are you more animated and how are you with your friends i think that deadpan thing is definitely in my repertoire with my friends but oh, you know sure. i hang out with some hilarious people my uh, they wouldn't be my friends if they weren't uh, they're not actors they're just pals you know and i'm not always the funny one much to my chagrin. <laughs> but I have great. a friend whose birthday is today. Her name is Laura Coyle. Uh, she's born on um, St. Patty's Day. We're doing this on St. Patty's Day. And she is the funniest person I know. She's, she's you know, not, she's, she's a musician and a singer. And I fall apart. And she laughs at me sometimes, you know. And yeah, she can laugh pretty hard at me. But, um, I, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not the only funny one. Yeah, but can she, like, I've got friends that are hilarious, but they could never translate it to performing. They're just <laughs> funny. You know, uh, could she, could she translate sure, yeah, it? Yeah, you can do that. She's a, she's a wonderful onstage uh, presence when she's doing her, her thing. You know, she's got her own thing going on for sure. But yeah, well, Johnny, I am special. I am able to, I am able to uh, bring it to, uh, 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 what do you call it, career. Yes, well, yes, you have. <laughs> and speaking of being funny, so many really great comedians uh, are miserable people <laughs> that have had something in their past that's made, that's been their defense is comedy. Mm -hmm. uh, they've had to uh, cover up things and learn to be funny, to, What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> Truly. <laughs> Thinking about that, Josh, I'm glad you brought it up. There has been, and I think it's something more of the past, um, that there was a lot of darkness, the, the, the tears of a clown in mm -hmm. um, uh, comedy people. And, you know, I worked at Second City in the 1980s, and there was some dark, heavy drug use going on. And just stuff underneath the surface and you know tears of a clown was kind of the the, the phrase that I, I would think of but now like the people that I know in the business who are funny they're, they're just so nice and I don't know if they have any darkness I don't see it like Steve Carell he's oh such a great guy Will Ferrell great guy um and I, I can't think of anybody else right now but th I, I think that that um that kind of darkness I, I think you, you, in order to be funny, there needs to be an irony and a mix of the, the light and the darkness. Uh, but uh, you don't have to live that. And I think at base, there are so many, like on Twitter, I'm sure you follow um, uh, Patton Oswalt. He's, oh, another, he's hilarious and he can go really dark, but he's not a dark guy. He's really a light, wonderful guy. Michael Ian Black, you know, he gets really dark, but he's a really great guy. I don't think he's suffering over anything great. 
So I think it's different now. And I, you know, I don't, I don't have much darkness. I, uh, um, you know, I had some younger for sure. And it's a great place to, if you can laugh about that, which is, you know, makes you miserable and makes you, you know, uh, lose faith in humanity and you can find the funny thing there. I think that's just the real, that's the real stuff. Well, that's good to hear because I always picture you <laughs> genius comedy people like going, okay, oh, I'm so funny. And going to a hotel room, just like. <laughs> 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 and leaving out and going, hey, everyone, I'm funny. I think we can see through that now, though. <laughs> I think we can see through that now that we can, if someone's being, you know, funny and, and yeah. they're really miserable, it, it, yeah. it, there's an, there's an edge of darkness. There's an edge of, it's, oh, I don't want to mention names, but there's some people out there <laughs> who are so thin skinned and you see it on Twitter. People are so thin skinned that you, um, if, if someone makes a joke at their expense or is slightly insulting, and these are the funny people, they can't handle it. They have to answer it and they have to, you know, um, you know, go after that person. And that surprised me about Twitter. I mean, it was or enlightening more than anything is that so many people are so thin skinned and they're answering. You don't do this, Rex, because I, I watch your stuff, but they're answering to all of these um, like the stupid things people say. You'll answer in a really funny way, in a really lovely, insulting way that I always <laughs> imagine. Me imagine being that I don't see you doing this like, <gasps> uh, yeah. Yeah. Imagine being that. <laughs> imagine being that thin-skinned, with yeah. no talent or funny, and you're stupid, and you become president. Yeah, oh, that happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, there's a lot of trolls out there, and one of the things that like trolls, like paid trolls, first of all, they don't have their, they don't have a profile picture, um, and they have seven followers, and they their purpose is to stir shit up. So they'll say something so rude, so inciting. And you just got to block them, you know, uh, report and block, report and block. You think they're, they're paid? Oh, yeah, I, I think they're I, so. I think they're troll Really? Bots. I didn't like by, by whom? I, I don't really no, know I, this. I, you know, I, I think that Russia does some of this stuff, but some of them you can tell that their native language is English. So I don't know. Some people are just, they get, you know, they're in the basement of their, their, um, their mother's house and they're 43 years old and they're just. You know. It took me a while to figure, figure that part of it out a few years ago. Then I started notice because I would I would tweet out basketball stuff and people would respond all kinds of responses and everything. Then I would tweet out something, you know, political or left leaning. And I would get responses from avatars of Kobe Bryant and LeBron James. And they were all these black football, basketball athletes. Mm -hmm. And you'd look and they're only following Sean Hannity and yep. uh, Tucker Carlson, <laughs> and that's it. And then you yeah. right away, you just know they're just there to respond to something negative. It's who knows who this person mm -hmm. is. Certainly mm -hmm. not so right wing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <More. laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um, you know, he, how, is. He, doesn't, he doesn't care about right or left wing at this point. I think we yeah. transcend all of that. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'm fascinated. I, I've had a smile on my face this whole time. My cheeks are hurting from smiling. I just love you so much. <laughs> oh, um, so you had the good fortune of meeting Christopher Guest. Yes. And, and then, you know, those movies, I've watched all of them with my mom tons of times. Uh, my mom's the, a huge fan. I, we grew up watching, I grew up watching Lucille Ball with her and old Perry Masons and, and everything from forever ago. Yeah, um, yeah. But you, you you got to work with Christopher Guest, and I, I want to hear about that. But you also work with Judd Apatow, and yes. and I'm wondering when I watch those movies, I it seems so so much of it seems like improv, and I wonder how much of it is, and how much of it is is scripted, and who's are they are they both similar? And I'll let you go. Yeah, they are. They're very similar. The the way Judd does it and the way that Christopher, you know, it's a, a lot of Im improvisation. And um, what Chris does is his scripts are um, scenarios that have seen. And so so do our Judd's. It'll look like a regular script and it'll say exterior dog show, interior party. And it will explain what's to happen in that scene. And then the actors fill it in. So there's no dialogue. He shoots fast. 
you sh- you show up ready. You show you know who you are. It's, it's almost like jazz. You uh you you have to know how to play your scales before you can improvise. So you you've done the ABC acting work at home by yourself in the mirror, however you do it, and then you just show up ready to go and you 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 improvise with all these people who you haven't you know uh, had a had had a talk with about this. Uh, I. I didn't you know we never talk to each other about it we just kind of show up and see what happens and he shoots fast and um we're we're done fast and he shoots a lot of film and i think he still shoots film um and then the big job for him is in the editing you know so that's where that's where he works amazing were you always did i mean did you just take to improv uh, when you, no. your first op, op, opportunity or no, no, there are, there's a lot of, there are two, there's two different kinds of improv. And I, I separate them as masculine and feminine. One's not better than the other. The masculine is more like the second city improvisational stuff that I'm not good at. And there are very few women who are too, which is interesting. Bonnie Hunt is great at it. One of the few who I think is great at it. And it's, um, it's about in, uh, kind of immersing yourself into a scenario and getting to the joke set up to the joke and you set each other up and, and you're really, it's, um, it's much more masculine. I always call it, it's like getting to the orgasm, <laughs> you know, no foreplay. <laughs> and then, uh, Christopher gets stuff. It's, 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 he doesn't want jokes. He doesn't want set up joke. He wants behavior. And so it flows more. It's more feminine. It's more, um, more foreplay and more almost aimless too. And you leave him, you, it's his job to shape it and, and give it, um, you know, uh, and, and give it beats and whatnot. You just, you just behave. And, and after I understood that the pressure, that the pressure was off for me, like best in show, I was always nervous. By the time I got to a mighty window, I was like, this is just hanging out. <laughs> Immerse- it's like, this is like playing house and then he'll put it together for us. Well, I mean, the mighty wind, of, I mean, it had to feel like that because I think it's hilarious. You, you have times where, the conception, the inception of a character is so funny. And then you get the exact right person to play it. And in the mighty wind, you play a former porn star right. turned folk singer. Right. Is there anyone, I mean, boom, that had to be, that's just brilliantly conceived. And then they got the exact right person that could do well, it. You were you hilarious. That. He, did, he would give us, he would give us like a thumbnail sketch of the person, but it was always like what you just said, always something just, crazy brilliant ex porn star becomes a like one of those really americana up with people um folk singers you know it's all about sunshine and birthday cake and um so to put those two together and uh was just so much fun and and what i uh, what was the most fun for me in doing that particular character is that in her mind they weren't opposite they just were so that's right. where i think the comedy came you know, was that she, uh, for her, she uh, she wasn't um, uh, like trying to suppress one part of herself in order to uh, express another part of herself. They just uh, were all integrated and they all worked. At and of course, time. Christopher knew knew of your porn background, too. Of right? course, that helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good helped. stuff, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> I told you fan. I'd say no to nothing. Mm-hmm. Oh, say and no. it does seem like there is a dark <laughs> past. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh yeah. goodness um so can you talk to me uh, or to, to us for for a minute or two about prop eight and <laughs> i think it was two, 2007 2008 yeah. um you know mm-hmm. um well just tell us about that if you don't mind and and what what compelled you and and yeah I just want to hear about it, please. Well, you know, it's interesting. I didn't do much thinking about it in 2008. I was like, just like, yeah, we should get married. And then I got married in 2010. It didn't last very long. But it was really nice that I was able to make that mistake for right. myself. Um, <laughs> that I had the right to. Um, yeah, so, uh, and, and what is it that's, there's some, oh, the Catholic Church, you know. Yeah. They, this is this, that's why I'm thinking about Prop 8 a lot now. It's it, of course Prop 8 was a Los Angeles um, proposition that allowed for gay marriage, and um, uh, Pope Francis, the cool Pope, uh, <laughs> said, "Oh, we can't bless those unions." To me, it is just so absurd 
to even have to say something like that. Just just move on. You know, your your church is falling apart as it is. It's riddled with sexual scandal and child abuse. Move on from this. Keep your mouth shut. Keep your heart open. And I grew up Catholic. Um, I don't know if that makes me um, more angry about this than I'm gay and I grew up Catholic, but um, I never really identified with being Catholic. It, it, I, it never moved me spiritually. In fact, it moves me more now yeah. than it did when I was a kid and going to church. Now I'll, I'll, I'll read about the saints. I, I read a book about uh, St. Teresa of Avila and oh, very moving. And wow, what a, and, uh, you know, Thomas of, uh, or, or St. Saint, Saint John of the Cross. I mean, these uh, Catholic mystics were just so inspiring and everything. And I'm going off on a tangent here, but this is great. Just, this is great. That. Yeah, it is great. Uh, one of my good, well, many of my, uh, friends are Catholic and, and one of my best friends is Catholic and he's been going through a tough time as we all are right now, but he, personally, he's been going through some stuff relationship wise and, and his guilt, man, he he's, and then, you know, the church and I, oh, his father, his father actually passed away not long ago. And I went to the service Catholic church mm -hmm. and um, just, it's, uh, it's still, I just saw Elton John the other day, you know, chimed in about it, you know, yeah, uh, the church talking about the blessings and, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I, I feel you. Um, what was it like, Jane <laughs> change really change gears mm -hmm. going to work every day on glee, like an NBA player in a sweatsuit. <laughs> I loved it. It was like staying, getting in my pajamas, you know, it was like, get out of get back in my pajamas. You know, the only complaint I have about glee is that I wasn't in it enough. Um, I, I, Amen. no, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, um, it, I know the kids work long and hard hours and everything. I would be like in two or three scenes in an episode. And sometimes I had the same lines Yeah. in my office now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> so I was, uh, um, I, I, I told Ryan Murphy, our, our creator toward the end of uh, the last season, I said, listen, I'm bored. You know, I, I understand that you've got other storylines you're focusing on. And then, you know, I don't I don't need a, a huge storyline, but just more. And boy, did he give it to me. Um, I in one episode, I dressed up as Pepe Le Pew before oh, yeah. he was canceled. And in another episode, another episode he had me shave my head. And so I had to go through all this makeup every day. So anyway, he gave, he he certainly came through for me. And he gave me some hilarious things to do. So I was very grateful for that. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a joy to be a part of that show because I know how much it was helping kids. And it turned being in the school play into something that was cool. Because like we were saying earlier on that, you know, uh, like the macho guys, they were kind of afraid to be in it. It was considered kind of a sissy thing. And, um, and the great thing about Glee is that you had the football player. You know, the quarterback of the football team yep. uh, turns out that he loves 80s power ballads and he joins the <laughs> um, and the bad boy he joins and the, the cheerleaders, they all joined. And so it wasn't just the theater kids, the like kind of wacky, um, uh, uh, unpopular ones in a wheelchair. And uh, another one is, you know, closeted and, uh, and you know, it, it, so somebody there was somebody for everybody to relate to and not just kids. Adults loved it, too. So that was a wonderful thing to be a part of. You know, I've with... got uh, I've got three to me, three things that that show you've made it. No, you've made it. And you know it. And I know you have two of them. And I'll say the third after it's uh, I'm sure you do, though. One. And I'd like to hear about both of these uh you have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. I do. I cannot wait. I want to hear what that the call was like. What what that the every part about that. Um, secondly, you hosted Saturday Night Live. You did, which is I Big got deal. to hear about that and the whole process. And thirdly, the one I don't know is I always think like if you're in Venice Beach and you're walking and you see the character people that do characters and your picture is one of the characters they show to be like, look, these are how the characters look. Have you ever seen yourself walking down the street on one of those? No, I have not. I haven't well, seen that. Well, that is a shame and I'm gonna start a petition. See what you can do about that. <laughs> the weirdest thing about having the, uh, well, I also have, uh, I, actually I'm conflating two stories, but not only do I have a walk uh, or a star on the uh, Hollywood um, Walk of Fame, but I have uh, a wax figure from Madame Tussauds. Oh. 
So that was you know, crazy four. So uh, the weirdest thing about that was there was kind of this big, um, you know, uh, ceremony and uh, it was during Glee and uh, they had a, a school choir there and there was press there. It was really fun. And then they usher us back uh, it, it, to our car and in front of an elevator is a woman holding my body in one arm and my head in the other. <laughs> I remember that most of all. And do you remember uh, the call when they called and said, we're going to, this is going to happen where you just um, flabbergasted? Was, Glee. You know, Glee had a lot to do with that. I think that, yeah, I know that they, they uh, 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 made the calls and the Hollywood walk of fame, fame. I know that Glee made that call as well, because it's like $30,000. Do you know that if you get a walk, a star on the walk, they want you to pay $30,000 to do it. So next time you see people getting a, a star on the walk of fame, they paid 30 grand out of their own pocket. So I didn't pay it. Makes sense. It. Makes sense. So, I suppose. Yeah, you know, you think, you know, you think that um, having those things will like put you over the top and term. That's not the stuff that makes me confident. You know, that, that it's almost, it's almost embarrassing. My computer's getting hot. Um, it's, it's almost embarrassing. Thing to have to have that in the moment anyway and now i i'm i'm agnostic about it it's neither here nor there um but uh uh, uh being on saturday night live was a really big deal and i was scared to death and then i realized like at the rehearsal on the saturday uh at five o'clock when you do the full show and the wardrobe and you do the whole thing i realized it's just a sketch comedy show i've been doing <laughs> sketch comedy it's like a pickup basketball game you're like that's right i've been doing this forever why, it's your why? wheelhouse. It, it, it's a pickup basketball game, but that's you're at the top of the top. Oh, yeah, the top of pickup basketball. Yes. Game. yes. And um, all, all of my lines are on a cue card. Oh, and I don't even have to change my clothes. I just stand there and they're whipping my clothes off of me, slapping on the new wig, putting on the new clothes. I didn't have to do anything. Oh, <laughs> just brilliant. be brilliant. You were <laughs> and you were. Uh, ex, I, you were the you were the singing performer that night, weren't you? Yeah, I was going to sing yeah, "Endless yeah. Love" with Greg yeah. Vaughn. There you yeah. are. Actually, I just, it was Bruno Mars. I remember that, and we did a we did a promo. He's about five foot six. Yeah, I'm six feet tall, and he jumped up and down the whole time to, to be as tall as me. For the promo, like a little a little so jumping. Well done. Well that's done. So great. Yeah, that's so that's funny. I always wondered why. Well, they change the line so quickly because it yeah. seems sometimes you just see the people just like looking off and reading exactly the thing. And you're like, did they just change that? Yeah, they did. I, I'm not a fan of it. And you know what? They want you to look at the um, uh, the cue cards. They don't want you to like memorize it. They want you looking at the cue cards because uh, it changes so much and you want everybody on the same page because it's live. So right. they say, depend on the cue cards. Do not look away from the cue cards. Stay on the cue cards. And I'm not a big fan of it because you can tell. Yeah, you can uh, absolutely. I've always yeah, wondered why, 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 why aren't they memorizing this? It's it's this yeah. is this is a big thing. But yeah, they yeah. change it so quickly. Thanks. Yeah. This is such a treat for me. Uh, well, listening to you guys talk about your careers is unbelievable. Talking shop. We Del Curry was on the other day, and Josh, I think, oh, felt yeah, kind of the same way. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> But I, I, I do want to tell you something. Um, and I don't, did you know, did you know of me at all before Twitter? No, not prior. No. Okay. Okay. No, 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 um, well, I just want to, I, I played basketball for a long time and then had a painkiller addiction drug yeah. problem for a long time. And um, during that time, of course, I wasn't my best, but this was in early 2000s, a lot of it. And throughout the two, 2000 to 2014 ish. Yeah. My kids were all ages, I don't know, well, they're eight years apart. Um, so they were, the oldest one might have been 13 or 14 around this time. And there were two shows that came on TV that I, my ex-wife and I were going through things. We were all living in the same house, but it was not a, a great house because of me, because yeah. of me. But there were two shows that we could watch every week. And I almost cry when I think about it because... Uh, it was Modern Family and Danny, Danny Zucker's going to come on with us. But oh. and it was Glee and they were family shows that we could all sit in there and uh, and laugh at and maybe cry about. 
and it taught it taught modern uh, i'm sorry your show glee it taught so much about being inclusive and yeah. and being accepting and and not being afraid of people that don't look like you yeah you no know? and so i just want to thank you for the for the oh. art and because it uh, really it's got us through some really tough times and every time i watch one i think about all of us sitting in there and and where I wasn't maybe in a great place, it, it sure, certainly brings back good memories. Good. Oh, I'm really happy to hear you say that. That's really touching. And, and I think another thing, too, that people respond to on Glee that maybe isn't um, articulated as much as the, oh, you, you know, it's all these different kinds of people, but they all had each other's back. They, once you got into that choir room, it didn't matter who you oh, were, yeah. they had each other's back. And I think, I don't care how old you are, whether you're in high school or you're 50 or 60 years old, knowing that you're not alone in the world and that somebody's got your back and will give a kind word. Priceless. Yeah, yeah. Janie, thank you. My Janie, I can't thank My you Rex. enough for coming. Oh. Josh, uh, you got anything uh, to say? I, I'm so appreciative. No. Oh, that was just so, so happy to have you. Uh, you're brilliantly funny and a wonderful human being, I can see now. And it's, uh, it's, it was just, thank you for coming. coming takes on. two to no one. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much, Jane. Will you come back and see us again? Oh, please? Oh, yes, absolutely. I was so thank glad you. to come. I was so glad you invited me. I was oh. really excited to meet you in person. You're doing oh. God's work on Twitter. Oh. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm so humbled. Wow. Josh, yeah. wow. our Janey, our, our Janey. Janey now. I like it. Oh my gosh, I could have gone on all day. My my cheeks are hurting from laughing or smiling so much. She's just a, a joy, an absolute. Yeah, and joy. it really does just show through what a, a nice person, sweet she is. I was actually relieved because I did think all the funny people were miserable people. Yeah, just you know, you know huffing glue and be like, yeah. <laughs> and then coming out and being funny. She was great. Yeah, she put that Lovely. at ease. She said, "Not all, not all uh, funny people have to be trouble, right?" We wouldn't know anything about that. No. Um, you know, also, I was glad to see that. You know, I'm not the only one to get stage fright in high school on this on the big stage. Uh, she's yeah, an inspiration, she... man. Just the nerve that it took to head out to Hollywood, and make it on her own. No, I, I didn't I share it, but I've had stage fright a couple times have you yeah I, uh, it was finally halftime and i really had to pay long <laughs> line <laughs> no um uh yeah she was the best um but, oh let's as we wrap up tell people don't forget same time next, next week, week tuesday tuesday the rex chapman podcast with josh hopkins, hopkins. hopkins. How about this? I got one. Ready? Yep. Liberty, Liberty, Rex, Chapman podcast with Josh Hawkins. Liberty. You know? yeah. Oh, I was going to, yeah. I like There's it. There's something to it. I don't know. There's it feels like there. you've heard it. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, next week, um, be sure uh, it's the Rex Chapman podcast. And um, it's powered by basketballnews.com. Basketballnews.com. <laughs> Uh, we'll work on that. Um, don't Next forget week. to 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 watch, to subscribe, and to and rate. rate five stars. That's the only rating there is, by the way. If you press four or something, like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it'll still go. Like in your five. computer just, or something. press five. Yeah, yeah. It's better five. for you. All right, man. Same uh, have time. A great, have a great yeah. rest of the, uh, of the tournament for you and working the tournament. You know, we'll talk before then, but I know you're flying around and doing stuff, so be safe. And we'll be back next week uh, with more basketball, more entertainment. Uh, who knows who we're going to have? I know, but and you know, but they don't know yet, Josh. Come back mm. next week and find out. <laughs> Feels good. Feels real good. Later. Basketballnews.com. <laughs>